greetings. I hope this finds you well. This um, watch slash listen to a very fascinating interview Chris Hedges had on his program on contact. The guest was Stephen F. Cohen, a professor emeritus at Princeton as well as New York University. Um, Stephen F. Cohen um, is kind of an expert on the United States relationship with Russia. He has lived there before. It's kind of his focus as far as scholarly stuff goes. Um, and the interview was basically around kind of this whole phenomenon of, of Russiagate, um, how it began, maybe who's behind it, the very serious consequences of, um, you know, claiming that Trump is a poop is a puppet of the Kremlin or of Moscow. Um, so the de demonization of Putin started before um, Trump was in the White House. Putin's actually, you know, an anti-communist, but the um, kind of Washington establishment, the, the deep state, they like him less than communist leaders. Um, Cohen pointed out that um, you know, the Clinton administration pushed, um, you know, kind of and propped up Boris Yeltsin, the, um, president of, uh, the, he was kind of the first, well, he was, I shouldn't say kind of, he was the first post-Soviet leader, um, it led to a lot of the selling off of the, you know, resources and things of that nature to the oligarchs as well as to a lot of um, privatization of things to my understanding it was a huge economic catastrophe industrial re production fell more than during even our great depression here in the United States um, <laughs> right before he left office Yeltsin had a two or three percent approval rating um, but he at Washington continued to prop him up I think Cohen stated that um, they like to say he was, that Yeltsin was some combination of Abraham Lincoln and some other, um, you know, kind of hallowed politician. Um, also talked about how actually Putin, during second Bush's uh, tenure in the White House, that came to Texas, um, and so there, you know, and he was saying good things about him at that point, but... Putin was not Boris Yeltsin. He he sought sovereignty for Russia. He sought them being able to kind of find their own course in the world, independent of the United States. Um, and then, so that's really the reason that the 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 deep state and the kind of Cold War antagonist didn't like don't like Putin is because he's not willing to be a puppet of the United States. Um, so, I think it was the head of the CIA, Cohen points out, or former head, I should say, um, Michael Brennan, I know that's it, his last name's Brennan, um, accusing Trump of being a, a, a agent of Putin. Um, there's, you know, three years of this has, has been going on. Um, you know, the corporate media, the, the establishment, most of them saying that Trump is a uh, Putin puppet, agent of the Kremlin, and Cohen rightly points out how damaging this is to the office of the presidency, to our, our election system, saying that, you know, Russians hacked into our election system, or that the person in the White House is an agent of the Kremlin, um, as well as, you know, affecting our relationship with Russia in nuclear armed country and also the biggest country in the world. And Cohen um, brought up, or Hedges, and both Hedges and Cohen brought up the concept of the, the detente, um, which has basically, you know, because there are, you know, these really big issues facing these two countries, you know, around these most dangerous aspects of the relationship between the U.S. and Russia. We should be focusing on finding areas of cooperation around those tenuous is issues instead of, you know, starting another Cold War, which could be end up being a hot war. Um, 
and this started under the Eisenhower administration as well as the Nixon detente and then with Reagan and Gorbachev as well and Cohen points that points out that in 2016 Trump made a statement you know maybe saying that we should have a better relationship with with our Russian counterparts and that was you know basically a statement of detente a detent, as uh, Cohen points out. Then, you know, the media at that point started calling, saying that, you know, Trump was in, uh, was a Russian puppet. Um, and then Cohen posits that, you know, there are higher ups uh, in the US government and the intelligence services that didn't like this uh, talk and then set into motion um, what we now know as Russiagate. So, and then he asked the question, you know, is, is this driven by the CIA? Um, and then it's, I guess, from his understanding, from his time in Russia and his contacts that they have there, that Russian policymakers actually did prefer Republican candidates because they were more, you know, focused on opening up and developing further business opportunities in Russia versus the Democratic candidates tended to be more ideological. Um, and Cohen uh, uh, asserts that our relationship with Russia is our is the most re important relationship that we have um, with any other country because they're nuclear power as well as being the largest largest country in the world. And Cohen uh, says, you know, a good question is a lot better than a bad answer. Um, and then so, kind of the main gists are of evidence that kind of got the whole Russiagate thing started was the Steele dossier. Um, I believe, is it Michael Steele? I don't know his first name, but Steele was a former MI6 um, agent. So British, uh, you know, secret intelligence. British intelligence officer, um, which this dossier, you know, contained allegations of extensive conspiracies between the Trump campaign and Moscow. Um, he said he got this, Steele said he got the info from high level sources, but Cohen says this is preposterous um, because it was basically, you know, saying that they were feeding Trump campaign dirt through steel even though Putin wanted to make him president like how how does that make sense and Cohen and um, Hedges both talk about how uh, Trump left Russia in the 1990s as far as him doing any type of business there um, and Cohen just said it's not plausible at all that Steele got info from these Russian sources and then Cohen talks about how right-wing news in the U.S. is saying that uh, is blaming Russia for this whole um, this whole thing by giving Steele fake info that that you know end up getting fed out, leading to RussiaGate. And he says, you know, who's behind it? And he said the surface info seems to suggest Brennan and the CIA were behind um, RussiaGate. Um, you know, no one's points out how nobody's afraid of the FBI, Comey's just a patsy, played by the CIA, and James Clapper, I believe, uh, James Clapper was the head of the NSA, I believe, um, and then Cohen says, you know, maybe a better name, for, a better question, is it Russiagate or Intelgate, the, you know, kind of the troubling concept that our intelligence agencies can just be totally off the reservation, if you will, and are, you know, we're actively trying to sabotage a presidential ca campaign as well as a presidency currently, um, and he says that, you know, we need to investigate Brennan and the CIA for their role in this, and Cohen said that Russiagate, from his perspective, is the biggest scandal since the Civil War. Um, and because for the reasons I just said that the intelligence agency trying to destroy a candidate and then, you know, a president, a very, very, very serious thing to do. And then, you know, we need to know about this, not yesterday or not today, but, but yesterday, cause it's a very serious thing. And then he says, 
Cohen, that is what senators are actually asking, you know, the right types of questions about this, and couldn't really name very many, he said me, um, perhaps Rand Paul, the kind of libertarian, and just how really serious this is, and our relationship with Russia is, is a existential relationship, um, meaning that either country kind of doesn't follow a kind of pragmatic approach and doesn't, you know, open up these channels of diplomacy that, you know, it could be the destruction of, of both countries, if not a huge chunk of the world. Um, and then so, and then just kind of some back, back history about this. They talk about um, how NATO, after the breakup, or after the wall was taken down between East and West Germany in, in 1990, um, there was a commitment made to Gorbachev, the leader of, uh, you know, the Soviet Union at the time, that NATO would not expand uh, past, after Germany reunified, um, and then so that was, you know, and then NATO wanted Germany to be a part of it, obviously, you know, that was a very hard sell for the Russian people because 27 and a half million Soviets died fighting Germany in World War II, so that was a very hard sell for, for Gorbachev to the Russian people, but they, um, you know, all of the, every Western leader from uh, Thatcher to Bush to the leader of France, all these different leaders made a promise to Gorbachev at the time that NATO would not expand any further west. I think it was Secretary of State Jim Baker said, you know, NATO's not going to expand like one or two inches, whatever his phrase was. Um, so that was back in 1990 that they made that promise that NATO would not expand any further. Um, but obviously, um, if you know anything about NATO, that's obviously not happened. They've they've expanded, NATO's reach has expanded greatly, um, you know, so, and Russians call that a betrayal, um, and Cohen says, you know, an informed Russia, Russian would be worried that the U.S. would betray them again because they, they, they've done it before, so why would they not do it again? Um, and Cohen says, you know, if we don't recover the modes of dip diplomacy and detente, um, it could be, you know, this, our relationship with them could go from, you know, one of a cold war to, to a hot war, and that's very scary. And Cohen points out he's not pro-Putin or pro-Russian, he's not pro <laughs> you know, United States or pro-Trump, he's just pro-avoiding a catastrophe between these two nuclear-armed countries, um, and as he says, you know, war could be accidental or intentional, as well as um, pointing out that back in 2002, under the second Bush, um, Bush two left the anti-ballistic missile treaty, which the ABM treaty prevented the deployment of missile defense. Um, so even that, if, if a country was able to get some type of missile defense system, they might think that they would have the ability to strike first because, you know, any missiles coming in, they would be able to um, theoretically defend against, so they would have that first strike capability in theory. Um, and then missile defense has been set up around Russia, and then once that started happening, you know, Russia started to develop a new missile program. Um, and then we found out last year that Russia has hypersonic missiles. So basically what that means, um, as Cohen says, that Russia now has nuclear missiles that can evade and elude any missile defense system. So, I mean, all these different events, you know, NATO, um, NATO expanding onto the Russian border, um, the United States leaving the anti-ballistic missile treaty in 2002 during Bush 2 has led to Russia gaining this, um, this missile, this nuclear missile that is able to evade any missile defense system, um, 
you know, and Putin said that, you know, he, they developed that because of what we did. Um, and now Putin says, you know, now it's a time for a serious arms control agreement. So this doesn't keep, you know, happening. So, um, and, you know, instead of maybe focusing on, you know, working with our Russian counterparts to develop a, you know, serious arms control agreement. So this doesn't keep heading further and further to, from becoming a cold war to a hot war. Instead, we get Russia Gate. And Cohen said that he uh, lays out five um, national security threats in his book, and Russiagate is, is the first one because, as I was talking about earlier in the video, it is it's, it's an ex existential relationship that we have with Russia, and this top this talk by the mainstream media saying that you know Trump is a Putin puppet, an agent of the Kremlin, um, it's, you know, making it more likely that it could be go from a cold war to a hot war, uh, you know, as well as the, um, the whole concept of our intelligence agencies, um, starting this, this whole kind of train of thought because they didn't like the idea of that Trump was a pro detente. Um, president, <clears throat> but, you know, in order for, for both countries to survive, we need to, we need to get a, a modern detente going with our, our Russian, um, counterparts, because we need to figure out how to cooperate, we need to open up those diplomatic channels, we need to, you know, maybe look at things from, from, from their perspective, like, if we were in their shoes and NATO kept expanding and we got rid of the missile defense or the anti-ballistic missile treaty and then, um, you know, missile defense systems went up around Russia, like how would we feel if, let's say, Canada and Mexico, um, you know, were doing those things around us? We'd probably be pretty freaked out and we'd be developing, you know, our own... Um, military technology to to defend against that so that's why it's so important that we do focus on cooperating with Russia and figuring out how to be um, you know figure out how to cooperate around around these issues that that face um, both countries and I just found it very interesting that um, the the detente is these this method of um, you know cooperating around these very very serious issues was the three main detentes were under Eisenhower, Nixon, and then um, Reagan. So I just found that very interesting. But I mean, we both countries have you know the type of weaponry that could. Uh, basically start World War Three. Um, we need to, like Putin said, come to some type of very serious arms control agreement between both countries, otherwise it's just going to keep building up and building up till it reach, reaches a breaking point, especially with, you know, the whole role that the media has played in the, this Russiagate um, you know, phenomenon, basically claiming that our president, um, is a agent of, of a foreign country or being greatly influenced by, you know, that country and that leader when there's been no evidence to say that that's anywhere true, even, you know, the Mueller report outlined that as well, there's no there's no collusion and the, the bogusness that was the steel dossier, supposedly kind of one of the tenets from the whole Russia Gate thing starting. It's not accurate, didn't have any real information in it. Um, so it's something that we need to take very seriously. And um, yeah, it's, I mean, one thing I can definitely agree with Trump on, we do need to um, cooperate with Russia and find these avenues of cooperation with them because of the existential relationship that we have. But 
<clears throat> just a very interesting um, interview that Hedges had with Cohen. I highly recommend you uh, go check that out. Again, it was Chris Hedges, his show on Contact, um, interviewing um, Stephen F. Cohen about um, about Russiagate. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this on this topic. Um, have you heard of the concept of detente before? Do you think that's something that the United States should pursue vis-a-vis -vis our um, relationship with Russia? Or do you not support that? And if so, what's your reasoning? Because from my perspective, it seems like the only workable way going forward is finding ways to cooperate with Russia. And <clears throat> as Putin says, working to some type of serious arms control agreements, so this whole ratcheting up of tension, um, you know, NATO expansion, missile um, defense systems, all these types of things really need to um, slow down, if not get rid of completely in order to avoid a um, total um, cata catastrophe happening between both countries that would, like I said, potentially more than likely lead to a World War III um, type of scenario because the um, consequences would be so high for a conflict like that between two nuclear armed um, countries. Peace.